Welcome to the Reddit Chronicles. Today we will be reading from Am I the Jerk? Our first post is by Throwaway. Am I the jerk for refusing to pay for my stepdaughter's tuition because she never liked me? I F39 married my husband M54 six years ago. Together eight, he has two children M20 and F19 Emma. I have a daughter F9. I was a widow when I met my husband. Emma had severe issues with her father getting married again while her brother got along very well with me and my daughter. He is the best older brother out there. Emma did not like me and she treated my daughter very badly too to the degree that she almost never left my arms when her sister was home. When Emma was 15 she permanently moved to live with her mother. My deceased husband left me a small fortune when he passed that I never touched since I had a good job and never wanted anything more. So last year I helped pay my stepson's tuition. I am planning to do that with my daughter too, and the rest I will add to my daughter. My stepdaughter is very angry now calling me the jerk. Am I? I never had a good relationship with her. She always hated me, and I don't think she's becoming a good person, and honestly I would rather leave more to my daughter than pay for her ungrateful butt. My husband is sad because he thinks I am being unjust. I am very sad about it but I still don't feel I am the jerk. Hi thanks this is my update. Hi Emma, unfortunately, I have no means to pay for your education, nor do I understand why you would expect me to however. I can help with finding you student jobs on evenings and weekends. I know many children doing that including myself, wish you good luck, and she responded. Okay okay whatever B word. Our next post is by Lanky Medium. Am I the jerk for making my daughter choose a different restaurant for her birthday meal than the one she really wanted? My 39F daughter very recently had her 17th birthday. My husband, 42M, and I told her to pick out a restaurant that she'd like us to take her to for her birthday. She chose a seafood restaurant that we'd never been to. In looking over the menu I saw that the vast majority of the dishes contained shellfish. There were a few fish entrees as well as some surf and turf, but there were only a couple of non-seafood dishes. Our son, 15M, is deathly allergic to shellfish. He also can't stand fish. There were only a couple of dishes there that he could actually eat. I didn't want to take him there because I knew that he wouldn't really enjoy his meal and I was worried about cross-contamination. I told my daughter that this restaurant wouldn't work and that she would have to pick out a different one. My son said that he would be fine just staying home, that we could use the money that we would have spent on his meal to just order him a pizza instead. My husband also insisted that since it was our daughter's birthday that she should be able to choose the restaurant, and that our son would be fine home alone with pizza and video games. But here's the thing, we can only afford to go out as a family every so often. When we splurge on a restaurant meal, I want both of our children there. I insisted and my daughter chose a different place and we had a nice meal as a family. But she is still a little salty that she didn't get to have her first choice of restaurants, most people I've asked say I'm wrong, but again we can only afford to go out every so often. Is it so wrong that I wanted to do it as a family? My daughter still had a nice birthday meal. Our next post is by G Glazer. Am I the jerk for telling a doctor to shut up on a turbulent flight? I-30M was on a flight from Atlanta to LAX last night. Packed flight, everyone just trying to get some sleep. About two hours in, the lights come on and an announcement crackles through the intercom, turbulence ahead, fasten seatbelts, pretty standard stuff. Then all hell breaks loose. This woman, maybe late 40s, impeccably dressed, starts freaking out, screaming about air pockets, demanding to speak to the pilot the whole nine yards. Flight attendant, super patient lady, bless her, tries to calm her down, explains it's standard procedure. Turbulence is normal, nope not having it. This lady, who will name Jane, throws a fit. Not the screeching nails on a chalkboard kind, but a cold steely fury, she accuses the flight attendant of lying of putting everyone in danger, and demands to be deplaned immediately. Flight attendant says that's not possible mid-flight, and Jane launches into this whole spiel about how she's a doctor, pulls out an ID to prove it, and if something happens, it's on the airline. Now the rest of the plane is awake. People are grumbling, some looking scared, a baby starts crying. Flight attendant is trying to reason with Jane, but it's like talking to a brick wall. Finally I just lose it I yell out, probably a little too loudly. Look lady, we all get turbulence. It's not a five star resort but it's safe. Sit down and shut up before you get yourself arrested, everyone stares at me. Jane spins around, eyes blazing, and starts in on me about disrespecting a medical professional. I fire back that a real doctor wouldn't be causing a scene and freaking everyone out. 
The flight attendant dives in trying to mediate, but the damage is done, we hit some turbulence. Not terrible, but enough to jostle the plane. Jane freaks again and some people start getting panicky. I feel awful, maybe I made things worse. The flight attendant gives me a look that could curdle milk but then steers Jane away to talk to her privately. By the time we land, things are calmer but the tension is thick. Jane gives me a withering look as she disembarks, and a few people mutter thanks under their breath. So, am I the jerk? Did I just escalate a bad situation, or was I right to shut down a meltdown that was putting other passengers on edge? I'm honestly not sure. Our next post is by Scary Literature. Am I the jerk for telling my son that we don't really have any room for him right now, so he needs to live with his dad and stepmom? My ex-husband and I divorced when my son was 10. My ex had found someone new. We went for 50-50 custody, but he still had to pay some child support. I went back to school at that time. On the weeks his dad had him I buckled down and did nothing but schoolwork. When he was with me I made sure I had time for him before and after school. I did expect him to help around the house but nothing excessive, mostly just cleaning up after himself and helping with cooking and laundry. His dad's house was more fun. I tried to make my home welcoming. I bought a used PS4 and I got fiber optic internet. It wasn't enough for him. When he was 14, he and his father got the court to award my ex primary custody. I did fight it but my son made it clear he would run away if I didn't give in. Counseling didn't help. I tried everything. It was devastating having my son decide I wasn't someone he wanted to spend time with. He started skipping visitation. When he did come he would leave the house and not come home until it was time to sleep. During this time I started a relationship with my current husband. He helped me through this. He wasn't on my radar romantically, nobody was. So he got close by being an amazing friend. I asked him out and we got married six months later. We had known each other since I went back to university. Six months after we got married I got pregnant. By strange coincidence, so did the woman my ex was cheating with. Not the woman he left me for. A newer model. I had sold my house and my husband and I bought a condo together just a two-bedroom apartment with a tiny den. We made the den into a nursery and consolidated our offices into the second bedroom. My ex moved in with his new girlfriend and she isn't a fan of my son. His stepmother doesn't want him there if his father isn't there, so my son is also in the new house with his dad, his dad's pregnant girlfriend, and her mom. My son is 16 now and he called me to see if he could stay with me. I said I didn't really have any room. He asked me what I did with his room. He didn't even know I sold the house. He is very upset. He called me a B-word for not having a place for him to stay. I said he could stay in our living room on the couch. Not acceptable. I talked to my husband, and we have enough money from the sale of my house and his old bachelor pad as well as our condo to buy back into the market. We were waiting for interest rates to fall. And we were going to move to a more reasonably priced city. I told my son if he could take the living room for now we could have a room for him in six months. He moved in with his grandparents. He isn't happy there. At least his dad got him a car so he can drive to his same school. My son is pissed that I prioritized my new baby and my work over him. I had no expectation to ever need to house him again. My ex called me and told me to make our office into a room for our son. I told him that our son's circumstances were his fault, not mine. Thank you for listening to the Reddit Chronicles. Follow for more content.